tonight. I want to uh, welcome the Kremen, uh, the Kremen faculty who are here tonight to support their students. I got that pop up in my face just a second. All right, so uh, let's see, who, who do I see that I want to say thanks for coming? I see Nicole. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. Um, other faculty that I see that are here. Oh, yes, Jonathan Pryor. Welcome, Dr. Pryor. It's good to see you this morning. Um, who else do I see? That are my faculty. I see Carol Fry Bolin. Thank you for coming, Carol. Dr. Huerta, you're connected by your phone. Are you having any connection issues or are you good? She might be driving. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Huerta, for coming. Did I miss any other faculty that are attending tonight? Thank you so very much. All the faculty are here to support their students. But I also, I also want to thank very important people here who are the donors, most of which I have met and have had uh, conversations with already and expressed my thanks. But let me also express my thanks tonight face-to-face uh, -face for making it possible for so many people to achieve their dreams tonight. This is our third in a series of five as we have a number of scholarships that we give in our college and we have, have to have five just to cover them all. Tonight, you're gonna meet the scholarship recipients, some of their family members, the donors that make it possible, staff and faculty. But before we go any further, uh, I wanna turn this over to our development director, Laura Clark, whose idea, by the way, this was, but she will never tell you. Thank you, Dean Yerrick. Um, I'd like to welcome a number of special guests here tonight. Uh, we have Bob and Carol Monkey, um, Jim Boren, Mike and Sally Robinson, and Deb and Phil Newfeld. We're going to hear from our special guests later in the program, but I just wanted to say hello to all those folks. And so here are the rules for tonight. Uh, please remain on mute until it's your turn. Um, and use the chat feature if you want to express congratulations or have side conversations with other folks who are participating tonight. Um, you also may want to set your screen to speaker view so you can have the best experience. Uh, and now without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our interim associate dean, uh, Dr. Kathy Godfrey. Hello everyone, good evening. And I just have to echo uh, Randy in saying that these events have been really, really special. Um, we look forward to them every week and it's always really wonderful to hear the stories of our students um, and the good work that they're doing in pursuing in their education. And then also to hear the stories of the donors and why they decided to um, donate uh, to these scholarships. So it's just really a, a lovely event. I hope that you'll all enjoy it tonight as well. So welcome to all the scholarship recipients and their families. Uh, we have a very special presentation of the scholarship students of the Kremen School. And we also have faculty here who were invited by the student receiving the scholarship to join them in this celebration. So I'd like to talk about the first scholarship uh, tonight, which is the Carol S. Monkey Scholarship. And this scholarship is for any junior or senior in the Kremen School of Education and Human Development. Tonight, we have both Bob and Carol Monkey who made this scholarship possible. Dr. Monkey has been affiliated with our college since 1969. His positions have ranged from professor, department chair, to associate dean and even interim dean on two occasions. Dr. Monkey, would you like to tell us a little bit about why you and your wife decided to create this scholarship? Dr. Monkey, you're on mute. I'm sorry, what? Oh, there you go, go ahead. When, when uh, I, about my fourth time to retire, I absolutely, said nobody contributes a dime to this one, nothing. And still what happened is, is some people got together and, and they rounded up like $15,000. <clears> so we had to start a scholarship and, and that thing is, is kept on growing. It gets larger every year because the donations still keep coming in. And somewhere along the way, not too long ago, I said, Carol, I think you should you know, uh, get one of these. 
no, no, I don't want it. Yeah, you really should. And and in time, she said, okay, well, I'll, I'll do it too. So we set up a scholarship for Carol. And amazingly, that this thing is starting to grow too and into a much larger sum. So that that's really kind of the story. And and Carol's been wonderful. She we we came here in what 1969, and she's been so helpful and supportive throughout these many years. Uh, and we have two children, and one lives here in Fresno, and the other one in Seattle. And they're both happy and doing well and have good family. So what else can you ask for? So that's about it in terms of maybe what I want to add, but that's, it's just nice to be here and be a part of this group. Thank you so much, Bob and Carol. We're so glad that you could be with us tonight too, and that we can thank you for setting up this scholarship as well. So this scholarship recipient is Jennifer Cervantes. Jennifer is a liberal studies major from Visalia, California. Jennifer, would you like to tell us what this scholarship means to you? Hi, uh, first of all, I'd like, I'd like to thank uh, everyone and especially the Carol Scholarship. It has helped me uh, financially. I'm a single mom, a beautiful daughter <laughs> and it's hard to, go to school, trying to work and trying to be a single head hustle. So thank you so much. Can I comment? Yes. <laughs> uh, Jennifer <clears throat> received your letter and thanks much for sending it. Very nice letter and do develop your skills as you intend to do in, in, in the elementary education and whatever else. Yes, I like the little ones. <laughs> good for you. We need good teachers. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you so much. I, I, I felt how much the scholarship means to you. And so I really appreciate how heartfelt your comments were. The next scholarship is the Dr. Francis F. Smith Scholarship. This was set up 40 years ago as a bequest from the estate of Lydian Smith. The scholarship is to benefit Kremen graduate students. Tonight's recipient is Alexandra Smith, who is pursuing a graduate degree in marriage, family, and child counseling. She is from Porterville, California. Good evening, Alexandra. Would you like to tell us what this scholarship means to you? Hi, yes, thank you for having me here. Um, like you said, I, my name is Alexandra Smith and I am a student in the Marriage, Family and Child Counseling Program. I'm looking to pursue um, a license in Marriage, Family Therapy and being in my program, it requires lots of hours of internships, so it makes it difficult to obtain, um, to obtain a job and keep a job while doing those internship hours. So this scholarship really helped me be able to pay my tuition and pursue this goal of mine and to hopefully one day serve the Fresno County and Central Valley. So thank you. Love that sentiment that you're gonna turn around and serve the community, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, thank you. The next scholarship is the Harold Coles Memorial Scholarship which is given to a senior or a graduate student in the field of elementary or secondary education. Tonight's recipient is Arlia Payne. She was unable to join us, but we would still like to offer her congratulations. Our next scholarship is the Joylene Boren Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is for a student working towards a master's degree in education or any future educational program with contributions to the promotion of reading and or children's literature. Tonight, we have Jim Boren here with us to explain the gen genesis of this scholarship. Jim is the former editor of the Fresno Bee and is now teaching journalism here at Fresno State. Good evening, Jim. Well, good evening. Thank you um, very much for having me. I'm just uh, so honored and and uh, to to keep alive um, Joylene's memory. She um, 
uh, was um, died well too soon um, of, a, of a disease when she was 31 years old. She was a decorated teacher in the Clovis Unified School District. She was the incoming president of the of the Fresno chapter of the International Reading Association, and um, we wanted to keep that memory alive through this scholarship. It has uh, been going for 40 years. Uh, I suspect that's in the neighborhood of four generations of teachers. I think we're probably getting teachers that are getting ready to retire that got the original scholarship. And it's, I'm just so honored to be able to um, um, be part of this. Um, the Kremen School, Fresno State, it was an important part to, um, for me and for Joylene, she graduated, uh, she grew up in Visalia, California, went to Hoover High School when, when the family moved to Fresno and then graduated with honors um, in, the, in what was then the School of Education at, at Fresno State. And of course now um, is, is the Kremen School. So um, I'm really pleased to be here tonight. Uh, congratulations to uh, all the recipients. Thank you for all the other donors of the scholarship. Um, uh, you, you make um, this community better by all that you do. So um, thank you for including me tonight. Thanks so much for being here, Jim. And I think that's just kind of amazing to think about that legacy, right? And that for decades more, the scholarship will benefit students. So thank you for sharing that story. The recipient of this scholarship is Nicolette Diaz. Nicolette just graduated with a second master's degree in education reading and language arts in the fall of 2020. Her undergraduate degree is in English from UC Davis. And I don't see Nicolette here, which really disappoints me because I chaired her thesis until to leave the country for a year. And then she had to finish her thesis with someone else when she got her first master's degree. Um, so congratulations, Nicolette. The second recipient of this scholarship is Michaela Morris. Uh, she was also unable to join us this evening, but I, but we wish her congratulations in um, her achievement with this scholarship. So congratulations to Michaela. Our next scholarship is the Mike and Sally Robinson Scholarship. This is for a student pursuing their master's degree in school counseling. Mike and Sally are very familiar with this area as they both have years of experience in the field. Sally spent 36 years as a teacher, learning director, and vice principal at Rayford Johnson Junior High School in, in Kingsburg, while Mike spent 35 years with the Fresno County Office of Education in school psychology, and then as an administrator, ending his career with two terms on the Fresno County Board of Education. They are both Fresno State graduates, and we are very happy to welcome them this evening. Mike and Sally. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Uh, thank you, Randy. Thank you, Laura, for setting this all up. I think I've been pestering Laura the last few years to somehow organize something so we could meet the scholarship recipients. Ironically, it ends up being in a COVID year, but still this is, this is really, really great. Um, Sally and I view education with all of our hearts as something that's really, really important. Obviously we're alumni of Fresno State, alumni of Kremen School, and uh, we are retired educators. So we've always had it in our DNA to try to give back to the community a little bit. And this is, uh, one way we, we really wanna do it. I see Diana Guzman, our recipients here today. So I'm anxious to hear for her, from her. And just one little note, uh, Bob Monkey was the chairman of my thesis <laughs> way back when. <laughs> so thank you, Bob. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody yeah, for being here. Thank you very much. And Diana, it's nice to meet you and we wish you much, much success in your career. Again, we're seeing that legacy, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah. So Diana is a graduate student in the school counseling program with the PPS credential. Her hometown is Chucandero, Mexico, but she's lived in Porterville, California for most of her K-12 education. Diana, would you like to take a couple of minutes to talk about what this scholarship means to you? 
Yes, um, so thank you everyone for being here and thank you Mike and Sally um, for the scholarship um, and for doing this more than once. Um, I know a lot of, you know, every recipient would greatly appreciate it. Um, I love education so much um, and I do want to work here in the Central Valley. Um, for my undergrad, I, I went away, so I decided to come back um, and get back to the Central Valley. So I'm hoping to become a school counselor. And um, unfortunately, like uh, when I began this year, um, since the school shut down, I couldn't substitute anymore. Um, and so thank God that, you know, I was able to receive the scholarship and that way it helped me and not be too much worried that I was unemployed for some time um, and I'm just really grateful and I'm excited to hopefully, you know, be employed as a, as a school counselor and to continue um, on with the education and all of that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Absolutely. That just brought a little tear to my I eye. I know, me too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. I just um, noticed that Nicolette yes. showed up. Hi, Dr. Godfrey. You remember Hi, Nicolette? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, like I have like a bunch of stuff to do. I have like a to-do list, so. <laughs> so we just talked with your with the donors of your scholarship. And I don't know if you want to introduce yourselves really quickly to Nicolette. And then Nicolette, if you want to take a minute to talk about the scholarship. Okay, hi, um, I'm Nicolette Diaz. Um, I see Mr. Boren is here. I got that scholarship. Um, I actually graduated in December. Um, I, if Dr. Godfrey remembers, this is actually my second master's degree that I just received and I received another additional credential. So I am now a, uh, I have two credentials and I'm a literacy, I can be a literacy coach or reading specialist, so. Um, I already, I'm a, I'm a teacher already. This is my eighth year. I teach at Parlor Junior High School. Um, I actually swap to, I do four classes at the junior high and two at the high school now. Um, we shut down in March because I was overhearing people saying that they closed. Um, so I've been doing distance learning since April. So, um, and I was shocked that I actually received the scholarship. <laughs> I will say that because I thought there was other people and I had put that I actually invest a lot of my own personal um, money into my classroom. Um, I'm sure a lot of teachers actually do that already and it actually helped me a lot. So I, want, I do want to say thank you bunches because I'm actually applying for the doctorate program. I haven't found out if I'm um, going to be admitted yet. And by the way, Nicole Walsh, I remember you from call as well so yeah that's me i'm already a teacher um i that's pretty much it so yeah it's great to hear what you've been up to nicola and jim did you want to say anything yes um uh, thank you nicola i uh, appreciate uh, uh the uh, the kind words and all that you uh, are doing for children um you know um you folks are on the front line and uh, to make our region better, um, it starts with education. So thank you um, for that. And uh, I know that you're gonna um, do well, um, uh, whatever your future plans are. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. I really appreciate the, um, the, the money. I really did. <laughs> it saved me a lot for my last semester. So yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, we're so glad you could make it, Nicolette. The next scholarship is the Multilingual Multicultural Education Scholarship. This scholarship is for a student in the Master of Arts in Education with the option of the Multilingual Multicultural Education Program. The MME is a two-year graduate program consisting of courses related to serving linguistically, culturally, and diverse communities. Its goals are to provide educators with an advanced level of inquiry, research, and professional preparation. The recipients tonight are Raul Gonzalez, Sandy Gonzalez, and McKenna Christensen. 
Tonight, we have Dr. Teresa Huerta with us to talk about these deserving students. Thank you. Well, I hope you can, you all can hear me. I'm actually commuting back from, uh, uh, from Fresno now to Visalia and I'm, I, I pulled over and I'm next to a dairy farm, just typical, right, of the Central Valley Visalia. But um, I'm so thrilled, nevertheless, to be able to acknowledge these three shining star um, uh, graduates of the, M of the Masters in Multilingual Multicultural Education. They, uh, their work, their inquiry, their research, their, uh, um, the fact that they are, are practitioners, teachers, two which are kindergarten teachers, and one that is a uh, working at a school providing technology. And that would be Sandy Gonzalez, who was also my right hand as a graduate assistant, along with Raul Gonzalez, who's just fantastic in regards to all the work that he has done for the betterment of, um, of, of the uh, South Valley uh, Visalia School District. And um, I'm sure he'll share a little bit about his work. Uh, along with uh, McKenna, who is a kindergarten teacher from Fresno Unified and does this beautiful job about talking about the social emotional health as we, as in regards to the intersection of culture and, and, and language. So three shining stars here, and I'm just so proud of them. And I'm, I'm glad that I was able to work this out and be here with everybody here today. We're so glad that you could be with us too, Dr. Huerta. That you pulled over. <laughs> so um, as Dr. Huerta noted, McKenna Christensen is the first re recipient. However, McKenna could not join us tonight, but we offer her a hearty congratulations. The second recipient is Raul Gonzalez. Raul is from Woodlake, California. Would you like to tell us a minute for a minute well, or first, two? Of course, and if you give me a minute or two, I'm gonna take a minute or two, so. Because that's, that's me, anytime I can do advocacy work, I do it. I wanna thank Dean Eric. I wanna actually thank Dr. Castro because I believe that he had some um, work in this as well. And, and of course, the Bulldog community, the School of Kremen uh, uh, also, and the Masters uh, in Multicultural multi a lingual education program. Um, but I want to take this time to speak about, as I listen tonight to the recipients, I'm, I'm hearing Visalia, Porterville, Lindsay, Woodlake. I'm hearing a lot of the South Valley. And I want to really speak to that because I believe it's very pivotal for our institution to really look at the un, un, untapped resources that we have in the South Valley. And I would, I can tell you as a testimonial that I would not have been able to complete the work that I've done had I not given, been given the opportunity to do it here in Visalia. I did not travel to Fresno. I would get out of my meetings at school and then I would drive about three blocks over to the South Valley campus. And many times we would do uh, classes there. There were some times, I, I gotta also give a thanks to Dr. Luz Gonzalez because even when we weren't meeting with the professor, she was allowing us a space to meet as a cohort and, and really have the ability to, to talk to each other, work through our assignments together and we did it there at that campus. So again, I think it's a beautiful thing what, 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 what this uh, institution has done for me personally, but also for the, for the students and a lot of the people in my, in my cohort. I also um, have to admit that I was on that um, media train uh, with Dr. Castro, with Dr. Lopez and Dr. Aguilar here in the Central Valley uh, talking about the South Valley Initiative and, and the ITEP program. So it, it kind of has come full circle for me. Uh, and my son, Christian, and my son, Christopher, have also graduated this year from the from Fresno State. So not only we're kind of just exchanging money kind of a little bit because I, paying their tuition and, and, and paying my tuition, I probably broke even or probably lost some money on the deal, but we gained an education. And that was the important thing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Raul. I could tell that you are a passionate advocate for your community. Yeah, give me a microphone and I can't stop, sorry. <laughs> no, I love that, love that. Finally, we have Sandy Gonzalez from Lindsay, California. Sandy, would you like to tell us what this scholarship means to you? Yeah, um, I wanted to thank Dr. Huerta and uh, President Castro, Randy Yerick, and everybody that's, you know, they're at the Kremen School of Education, everyone that's there to support us learners. Um, I just, this scholarship means, um, a lot to me because 
I am a parent and a student. So this, you know, definitely helps alleviate, you know, a little bit of the financial stressors that come with school. Um, I do aspire to teach one day, just like my colleagues that just, you know, we're also honored. Um, so this will definitely help me work towards that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. And, you know, you guys are all awesome helping us move up in our careers and get through this. Uh, it's, everything's really appreciated over here. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. We wish you all the best in your career. We know you'll be a good advocate for Kremen. The next scholarship is the Neufeld Scholarship. This is a, a master's doctoral degree scholarship. Sorry. Um, this is for a master's doctoral degree student who plans to conduct research in educational technology for their culminating project or to pursue their certificate of advanced study in educational technology. Philip and Debbie both completed graduate degrees from Fresno State. Debbie has an MA in education and Philip has an MBA and an FD. Their scholarship invests in educational leaders who are highly committed to better preparing every student for their futures where the skills to integrate technology determine how these students will participate and impact society. Welcome to the New Belts. Thank you. Um, just a quick thing. We decided when we were setting up the scholarship, we really were thinking about graduate students specifically because we know that individuals who decide to go to grad school are usually making a lot of sacrifices. They're usually juggling full-time jobs, full-time family responsibilities, full-time school. So we just had a heart for that and we wanted to, um, we just felt that that's where our focus, we, we wanted to have that as our focus and that would be a, a way that we would like to con contribute and make an impact on someone's life that way. So, Bill? Cool. The intent of the scholarship is to increase educators' understanding of the relation between education and technology and appreciation of the benefits and risks, a better understanding of how to shape students' agency, choosing how to design and use technology in ways that benefit all people. And from an equity standpoint, this is a differentiator that every student needs to be able to have as a skill and that agency so that they can thrive in a modern society. So, yeah. We're so grateful to you for setting up this scholarship and excited to honor this student as well. Um, Dr. Jonathan Pryor is also our guest this evening as he is one of our scholarship recipients professors and in fact, the chair of his dissertation committee. Dr. Pryor, would you like to tell us about your student? Absolutely, good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you to our, our donors for supporting our students and their success. I really do appreciate it. And I, I wish that we could be in physical presence, um, but I trust next year, uh, this will happen. Um, Gus, I'm so happy to be here to help recognize you uh, for the Newfield Scholarship Award. Uh, this is such a well-deserved recognition for your work and I'm honored to be able to help acknowledge you for this. Um, you know, I can't believe that it was just about a year ago that we met as you began exploring the direction for your dissertation work. And I can remember that light bulb conversation of thinking about photovisual methods and using that as an innovative tool for exploring students' intercultural experiences and the profound learning then that can occur during those learning opportunities. Uh, so your topic has such valuable implications, not only um, for practice, but also for research and thinking through unique approaches to gauge student learning and success. So I'm excited to continue to support you in that journey. And it's also been a joy to work with you in the classroom. So I kind of have been able to see you in both realms. And too often, I think that we can get siloed into our literature base or general thinking as it relates to the field of educational leadership and not remember that our field is truly interdisciplinary. And I think your experiences, knowledge of other fields, languages, and cultures bring such a rich conversation to our classroom environments and learning as it relates to leadership and education. So, and I know the sentiment is shared amongst your colleagues in the EDD program as well. So thank you for letting me uh, join you tonight. And it's a true pleasure working with you and getting to know you over this last year. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Dr. Pryor. 
Gus is a doctoral candidate in the Educational Leadership Program and is part of our online co cohort. He currently lives in Delray Oaks, California, and we're so happy to have him join us this evening as our first doctoral scholarship recipient. Gus, we are very interested in the topic of your dissertation and would love to hear about what this scholarship means to you. Wow, well, thank you, everyone. This is quite a lead in. It's, it, it feels like we've been lifted. Um, what Raul said about uh, connecting people across space and, um, and especially across the valley, it was really uh, helpful for me. I unfortunately don't live in the Central Valley. I'm over in the Salinas Valley um, looking at Monterey. Um, and our South County students really also need um, access to technology. And it's, we, we are seeing, especially in this year of COVID, how transformative it is to connect um, across space and time. And uh, you know, that's really what's been possible for me with the program at Fresno is that I can live here in, on the central coast of California and yet be fully as present as everyone else here in this gathering tonight. So, um, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for what the Newfeld family has done um, in terms of supporting me. I, um, I share the privilege, as some of you have mentioned, of being a parent right now. So I, and this is, I'm grateful this is the first year in three that I haven't had to pay three sets of tuition. So um, one of my kids finally graduated from college last spring. That was a, that was a nice moment. And um, so Sophia, my youngest, and I are sharing some time. Um, you know, and this is also a year of, of uh, real challenge in my family. We've had a lot of, uh, um, you know, everything from a, a brain injury to um, several folks um, with a lot of, you know, kind of end of life situations among parents and in-laws. And my wife uh, recently became ill too. So it's, uh, your support um, has, it really just means um, so much right now to, to be able to move forward without the financial difficulty on top of all of the emotional and, and, uh, and just the other strain that's going on. So, the, um, so thank you very much. I'm grateful to be able to speak a little bit. Um, and uh, so then um, the work that I'm doing, I, we've been, uh, I've been working in, well, I actually started as, an, as a language educator. I started out teaching Swedish way back in the 90s. I'm a little older. And uh, and switched over to teaching ESL and taught abroad and I taught domestically in Minnesota as well as um, here in California a bit. And, uh, but really shifted over to instructional technology and I've been working with instructional technology for language learning for about 20 years at Cal State Monterey Bay. Um, and uh, we've been sending our students to Japan, our Japanese majors, and um, there's always this question of when they leave our campus, what are they doing? Well, we found that asking them to, training them to take photographs and write about what those photographs hold has allowed them to bring those experiences back to the campus and integrate it into their uh, senior e-portfolios. So we're hitting on a lot of high impact practices in education, reflective practices, um, the integration of course of technology, as well as this uh, photo visual literacy and helping students really understand the world that they see and how it connects back to the frameworks that they got on their campus. So. That's, um, that, um, and I'm hoping that it starts to point to the opportunities that they have while they're abroad around developing their sense of citizenship here in the United States to help them um, become stronger and more engaged citizens. And I, I think that this work is going to push that way. Um, that's kind of the next step um, that we'll be exploring. And uh, I'm, I'm also, I'm so grateful for the introduction from Dr. Pryor, but I'm also grateful to see Dr. Walsh here, who um, they are my last two faculty and uh, I'll be all but dissertation in about, a, uh, about seven weeks. So it's a very exciting time with the dissertation to pull together and, and wrap it up this year. So um, I happily entertain any questions, but otherwise I'm gonna um, cede the floor and, and I appreciate just really um, from the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful for the support and um, the sense that this stuff matters, that, uh, that we, you know, the opportunities that we give our students is going to improve the world for all of us. And I think, uh, Philip, you nailed it right on the head to know that these skills that we give our students are the transformative ones that will carry them through the 21st century. And uh, so I'm just so grateful to be here amongst this group. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. So appreciate hearing what you're doing and what you're, yeah, how you're moving things forward. Thank you. Thanks. Wow. Go ahead, Laura. Thank you, Dr. Godfrey. 
Well, tonight you've had the opportunity to meet some outstanding and promising students, but they would not be here without the guidance and support of some amazing teachers. Here at the Kremen School, we have a teacher honor wall right outside the building where a volunteer committee has worked for over 20 years to honor these heroes. In fact, Dr. Bob Monkey has been the, the founder of this program and he is right here on our Zoom tonight. So we're honored to have Bob and Carol here for this especially. Um, if you would like to create a brick in honor of your student, teacher, or other educator, please go to the Kremen page on the Fresno State website for more information. The proceeds from this go to technology that helps us with the students and the teachers that we're teaching. I'd also like to extend a sincere thank you to all of our donors, stewards, and special guests this evening who helped make this event possible. Finally, I would like to thank our development coordinator, Heather McDowell, who you've all communicated with. Um, thank you, Heather. Um, and I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, Dr. Godfrey to close us out tonight because the Dean had to leave early for another event. So thank you, um, a special thanks to Laura and Heather McDowell for all their work in setting this up. We're just so grateful to have this opportunity. I mean, there's a way that this has felt, these events have felt more intimate than how we usually honor our scholarship recipients. And so that's kind of an unusual situation that we're in that uh, these events allow us to um, Get to know each of the scholarship recipients a little bit better and then also to get to know the donors and their stories. So thank you so much for being part of that. And you know Raul made a comment that I just I had something else I was going to say but it's just so profound and it actually is um, very similar to you know my script but so heartfelt. Um, he said, we have honored our social contract of taking care of each other as a community. And I just am so appreciative of those sentiments in the ways that that is so evident in this gathering of people who are giving to the community. Um, you know, we know that those of you who are students, that you are serving your communities, you are serving um, each other in your programs, uh, you have many, many years ahead of you where you're, you're kind of contributing to that social contract. And then we also see the donors who, you know, have been able to um, find funds to give back to uh, an institution that has meant something to them um, to help others pursue their education and achieve their goals. And it just is really a lovely opportunity for all of us to be together and to celebrate how we take care of each other. So Raul, thanks so much for making that comment. Appreciate that. Thanks to you for being here tonight. Um, the event is officially over, but if you wanna say something to each other, we'll hang out for another few minutes and have a conversation. And uh, if you've got a run, then we just wish you a great evening and lots of success in all of your endeavors. Thanks for being here. Thank you. There's hear many good things about new new students, new educators, and, and a lot of action going on. It's really good to see that. All the way in the South Valley gets gets a good amount of support too for what all, they're all doing. It really made a difference. So thanks to everyone. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Thank you, Kathleen, very much for hosting this. And Diana, nice to meet you. Thanks to me as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Heather, thanks for helping no coordinate things like this also. I think these yeah. are the sort of things that we'll keep doing even afterward to connect with people in Salinas and the South Valley. Um, we can stretch our reach and, and further the impact. This is great. Absolutely. Hey. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. All. Have so a good one. Being here. Wish you the best. Thanks all, this was a rich evening. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Monkey. Bye, good to see you, Heather. Good to thank see you, you too. everyone. Another thank good you. job. <laughs> okay, thank you.
Okay, good job, Heather. <laughs> A few <Yeah>. isolates here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to, I had someone at my front door and I was like trying to talk to them over the speaker and I was like, oh my gosh, I love working from the house. Woohoo! <laughs> It's a good event, though. A lot of, a lot of good things happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun, right? Yeah. Thank I'm you guys for joining us. Yeah, so good to have you here, Bob and Carol. I want to say anything, Bill? Come on, let's Hi, hear. Carol. Hi. <laughs> good to see your school spirit. She works best talking on a telephone. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, no. You look so nice in all your red. Yeah, we for bulldogs too. Your bulldog red, you betcha. <laughs> Wish the virus would get over with. I don't know. I think they'll have a team next year. We'll see. Looks like yeah. it's heading in the right direction. I hope so. Yeah. Well, I gotta go to my backyard. I got stuff happening. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Bye, guys. Thank you. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>